Good morning. Today our goal is to learn about converting a velocity time graph to an acceleration time graph. And so here's a velocity time graph. And in the previous video, I showed you how to convert this velocity time graph into a position time graph. However, today we're going to take this velocity time graph and ultimately convert it into this. What we're looking at is an acceleration time graph. So that's our goal today, to learn how to take that velocity time graph and create a graph that looks like this. And so for starters, we're going to describe this graph. So for the first section, from zero to four seconds, it's constant velocity. The velocity is not changing, four meters per second north. For section B, because a line is drawn, this represents constant acceleration. And in fact, the car in this case is slowing down, moving north. And finally, for section C, from seven to 10 seconds, the car is stopped. So how do we go from a velocity time graph to an acceleration time graph? What do we have to do to get there? For starters, we need to calculate the acceleration. To do that, we need to calculate the slope of each section of the graph. We need to calculate the slope for each line. Slope is rise over run. And looking at the first section, there is no rise. The rise is zero. The run is four seconds. And so for section A, from zero to four seconds, the acceleration is exactly zero. How do we plot this on a graph? Well, this is how we plot an acceleration of zero. It's just a line across the x-axis. Notice that the line ended at four seconds. Why was that? Well, it ends at four seconds because section A ends at four seconds. In other words, the acceleration changes at the four second point. That's why we stop drawing the line at four seconds. All right, now that we've plotted the acceleration for the first part of the graph from zero to four seconds, what about the next section of the graph, section B? Once again, to calculate acceleration, we need to find slope. Slope is rise over run. So we've drawn there the rise and the run. The rise is negative four meters per second. The velocity is decreasing, it's not increasing. So that's why it's negative. The run is three seconds. How do we know it's three seconds? Well, this line starts at four and ends at seven seconds. The time that's elapsed is three seconds. And so we do our math, we substitute our numbers into the equation, rise over run, negative four over three, and we end up with this answer, negative four thirds or negative 1.33 meters per second, per second. So how do we plot that in an acceleration time graph? Well, we draw a line. That line is drawn at negative 1.333, meters per second per second, or negative four-thirds meters per second per second. That line starts at four seconds and ends at seven seconds because section B started at four seconds and ended at seven seconds. What about section C? The rise is zero, the run is three seconds, and we end up with an acceleration of zero. And that's how we plot the last part of the graph. It starts at seven seconds and ends at 10 seconds. And so the question is this, if we look at the graph and specifically we look at the four second point, the car seems to instantaneously accelerate from a value of zero to a value of negative four over three meters per second per second. Is this even possible? Is the transition at four seconds realistic? Similarly, at seven seconds, is the transition realistic? And the answer is no. 
in real life, you would never get that instantaneous change in acceleration. It's impossible for a car. And so the reality is there would be a smooth transition. And I've shown you that smooth transition at the four second point and at the seven second point. However, for simplicity, we're going to ignore that there is a smooth transition. All right. So here's the task I'd like you to complete. Here's the velocity of a car for 15 seconds. This time we have five different sections of acceleration. I'd like you to calculate the slope for each section and then try to create an acceleration time graph. Ultimately, if you really want to understand physics, you have to practice these skills. Here's the answer you should get once you complete all your work, so give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.